Series 9 finale Hellbent is possibly one of the most polarizing episodes of Doctor Who to have actually aired. Hot on the heels of the fantastic one-two punch of Face the Raven and Heaven Sent, which explore the death of companion Clara Oswald and also how the Doctor then handles this loss, the finale really did have a tough act to follow. Now if you take a look at any forum or comment section, you'll find fans who would argue that in traditional fashion, the finale was actually a masterpiece right up until a certain showrunner moffed it all up. Though writing impactful, satisfying finales was never a consistent feature of Stephen Moffat's tenure. I mean, for every Big Bang and Doctor Falls, there was of course a name of the Doctor or a death in heaven. Hellbent is not just a fantastic ending to the series, but it's also the perfect culmination of Twelve and Clara's arc. It's also a lot cleverer than people give it credit for. And that is largely down to the way that these three final episodes are structured. Over the course of Face the Raven, Heaven Sent and Hellbent, the Twelfth Doctor transitions through the various stages of grief. He does not complete this journey until the closing moments of the series, which means that by removing Hellbent or executing it in a different way, his recovery wouldn't be complete. The various parts of this process arguably are subtle at times, but they are still there. The tumultuous events on Gallifrey don't undermine Clara's death, but rather they actually punctuate it and give a realistic and refreshing perspective on what a man who we Builds as much power as the Doctor does would do to save those that he loves. Shock. Peter Capaldi acts the initial realization that Clara has taken the chronolog from Riggsy beautifully. He's staggering about the room and he barely says a word for the first few minutes, which is not a usual thing for the Doctor to do, and it's a clear sign that he isn't in his right frame of mind. Instead, he actually leaves a shielder to explain to Clara that she has effectively signed her own death warrant. It's clear here that Twelve is unable to process his emotions at first, which is exactly what does happen when anyone receives bad news. In those first few seconds, you're almost paralysed while the weight of whatever has just happened starts to sink in. Of course, it doesn't take long for Twelve's doctorness to kick in, and then he obviously does spring into action. Denial. Refusing to give in, Twelve then turns on a shielder, insisting that she remove the chronolock despite knowing, and having said himself, that it's impossible. And there are also flashes of anger here too, as you would expect. And of course it is true that various stages of the grieving process can overlap. Twelve demands that a shielder fix the situation, threatening to end her and everything she loves if she can't save Clara. He refuses to accept that there isn't a way out, even though he can't even see one himself. I can do whatever the hell I like. You've read the stories. You know who I am. Then shortly after, there's a heartbreaking moment where he just stands in the corner of the room and tells himself, this isn't happening, this can't be happening. He's literally backed into a corner and he knows it, but he can't admit to himself that Clara's fate is sealed. Anger. So after Clara faces the Raven and then meets her end, the Doctor is teleported to within his confession dial. But not before warning a shielder who put the chronolock on Riggsy in the first place and was therefore largely responsible for Clara's death to stay out of his way, telling her, you'll find that it's a very small universe when I'm angry with you. Now the look on his face could send an entire army running for the hills. He is angry. When he then first emerges in Heaven Sent, the Doctor is vengeful. He's still reeling from the events of the previous episode and is yet to accept what has happened. He threatens his as yet unrevealed captors and warns them that he is not weak just because Clara is gone and that they should be afraid. These moments in both episodes contain some of the most intense wrath we have ever seen from the Doctor, which are only amplified by the Doctor dissociating himself from his own name at the end of Face the Raven. I know the Doctor. The Doctor, the doctor is no longer here, you are stuck with me! Clara's death has changed something in him, as grief does for most people. He seeks revenge, which is most unlike the Doctor, but more than that, 
he breaks Clara's final wish for him to be a doctor, not a warrior, which might I add is a brilliant little callback to the day of the doctor early on in their relationship where Clara similarly implored Eleven to be a doctor because the universe has enough warriors. But the 12th doctor chooses to ignore this with his anger sending him spiraling down a path that the character would not usually take. Bargaining. This stage of the process takes up the bulk of Heaven Sense runtime. It's later revealed that the Doctor could have left the confession dial at any time if he confessed to knowing about the hybrid, but instead he tortures himself for four and a half billion years, reliving the same days over and over and over. But how long will I have to be here? The Doctor sees reminders of Clara everywhere that he goes, which is a clear sign that he has strong feelings of guilt over her death. And instead of processing this grief, he blames himself. This is a painful and lengthy process, and the claustrophobic puzzle box castle with a looming shadow in the form of the veil is the perfect metaphor. Grief can feel insurmountable, and it doesn't get more insurmountable than this. Now, one particularly sad detail about the castle was actually revealed by Stephen Moffat in Doctor Who magazine, where he explained that the I am in 12 clue was also actually written on the back of the Clara portrait. But the Doctor found too much comfort in her smile, and he just couldn't bring himself to turn her against the wall. Ugh. Just when you thought this whole saga couldn't get more heartbreaking, they dropped something like that on you. Depression. This stage starts when the Doctor finds the wall, and he slowly realises that he's been through this entire process before. He feels that he is doomed to be trapped in the confession dial and in this grieving process forever, with no way out but to break free, step by agonising step. He finally admits to himself that Clara is gone, breaking down and then questioning if he has to carry on, and why he can't just lose for once. I can remember it all every time, and you'll still be gone. He's only able to pull himself out of this by telling himself that this is not what Clara would have wanted. So he visualises this coping mechanism as a conversation with Clara. But remember, in reality, the Doctor is saving himself here, which is a detail that can easily be overlooked in this episode. Essentially, he's using his memories of her to help him move on, like any person who's lost a loved one would do. It's a really powerful sentiment that adds just yet another layer to Heaven Sense complex storytelling. The Doctor steals himself, vowing to get to the other side of the wall, and inches ever closer to acceptance. Testing. So it's at this stage of the grieving process that people tend to cling to various solutions for their loss and try out different things in an attempt to move forward. But they're still not fully at peace with what has happened. The Doctor has decided that his solution is to break free by literally punching through the wall over billions of years. Not only will this allow him to withhold any information that he may or may not have about the hybrid, but it will also allow him to confront his captors on his own terms, and possibly even figure out a way to bring Clara back. This also serves as a distraction, allowing him to focus on something other than his sadness. Where me or you might work on a jigsaw puzzle or lose ourselves in a good book, the Doctor finds solace in punching through a harder than diamond wall for 4.5 billion years. I mean, you do you. You do you. Emerging from the confession dial and then landing on Gallifrey, the Doctor comes into Hellbent, having overcome the feelings of despair that plagued him in Heaven Sent, but the experience has changed and hardened him. Tell them I know what they did. And I'm on my way. The Doctor then thinks that he's found a permanent solution by extracting Clara from her time stream just before her death in Face the Raven. He then proceeds to break the rules of time to escape with her, forcing the General to regenerate in the process. Not very Doctor-like. Now we've seen the Doctor kill people before, but rarely someone who is in the right, and rarely quite so directly. 
The lengths that he goes to are shocking in this episode and seem incredibly out of character, but that's the whole point. This is a man with a singular purpose, going to extreme lengths to pull himself out of a cycle of guilt and grief, a cycle that at the moment he feels trapped by. He isn't meant to behave rationally at this point. The Doctor dispatches his fellow Time Lord coldly and without remorse, and everything from his dialogue to his body language tells us that the character we are watching here is not the Doctor. Rightly or wrongly, he believes that this is how he can move forward. Acceptance After travelling to the end of the universe with Clara, the Doctor realises that it's time for them to part ways. Clara still doesn't have a pulse, and she clearly wants no part of the Doctor breaking the laws of time. But all the same, he's still determined to save her. In order to prevent Clara having to return to the moment of her death, he attempts to wipe her memory of him and sacrifice the opportunity to be with her in order to keep her safe. But Clara overhearing this reverses the polarity of the neural blocker so that it actually backfires on the Doctor and wipes his memories of her instead. In these final sequences, as he comes to accept that his time with Clara is over, the Doctor finally admits that he's gone too far in the hope of saving her, and that meddling with time itself was actually wrong. This is even punctuated by Four Knocks, which is a callback to the Tenth Doctor's brief turn as the Time Lord Victorious in the Waters of Mars, which is the last time that the Doctor went too far. Four Knocks. It's always Four Knocks. Clara's death in Face the Raven is actually a beautiful conclusion to her arc of becoming too much like the Doctor. Now, many fans say that negating this death actually cheapens it. And they're right, it does. But once again, that's entirely the point. The death isn't undermined by Moffat's writing, but by the Doctor's actions. He steals this poetic end away from her, crossing the line and letting his grief take him beyond even his own rules. The events of Hellbent are meant to feel unnatural, because the audience needs that unsettling feeling that what Twelve is doing here is very, very wrong. Clara's resurrection also represents the idea that we all crave a reunion with our lost loved one, but all we have left are photos and memories, vague representations of the real thing that can never truly fill that void. The Doctor may bring Clara back, but it's not quite the same. She doesn't have a pulse, and all her physical processes have been frozen. She's basically a shade of her real self. And in the end, they both come to realise this. As his memory is wiped, the Doctor tells Clara that this is right. He accepts that she must die and that he must move on. He composes a song in her memory, which is actually a sign that he's beginning to process his emotions in a healthy way and commemorate the time that they spent together rather than stay stuck in grief. This is the conclusion to not just Twelve and Clara's story, but also to Twelve's grieving process. He ends Hellbent entering the TARDIS, claiming a new sonic screwdriver, and once again becoming the Doctor, exactly like she wanted him to do. Until Series 9, nobody actually asked the question of what would happen if the Doctor simply refused to accept the loss of a companion. This finale explored in great detail what a loss that significant can do to a person, turning the rinse and repeat formula of companion dies, Doctor mopes for an episode, and then Doctor goes on the rebound on its head. Hellbent is actually a much more fitting ending than it gets credit for, and it's quite possibly the most thematically rich companion departure in Doctor Who history. But I want to know what you think. Do you agree with our analysis? Let me know in the comments down below. In the meantime, I've been Ellie for Who Culture, and in the words of River Song herself, goodbye, sweeties.